So it is April 28, 2022. This is a nonprofit executive leadership roundtable. I am Tommy D. And I call myself the nonprofit sector connector. I host a radio show called Philanthropy in Focus, where every week I help nonprofits tell their story and, as I say, amplify their message. And with my collaborator, Christine Deska, I always look forward to this meeting every month because it's all my nonprofit. Well, not all my nonprofit friends get here in the same room, but many of my nonprofit friends come here. And as you know, uh, folks in this room and folks who might be checking this out later, nonprofits change our world, make incredible impact. And I argue if it wasn't for the nonprofit sector, a lot of these things don't get done. The service that these organizations do doesn't get done. And, and, and that's why this sector is so important. So let's do this. Let's go around the room. We're going to have each person introduce themselves, their name, the name of their organization, uh, the type of work they are doing. I mean, you can do this really quick. So we're going to do about 45 seconds. And if there is something specific that you're looking for, um, you know, mention it. And I will be loving when I say, all right, let's bring it back. Let's keep it moving. If anybody kind of goes long, and I mean that with compassion, but we, you know, we got to keep time to it. So let's go to Judy Siegel, and then we'll go to Eileen Minogue right after that. Thanks, Tommy. I'm Judy Siegel. I'm a senior staff attorney at Pro Bono Partnership. We provide free, and I do mean free, legal services to nonprofits in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, everywhere except the five boroughs. Sorry about that, but we are looking for more clients. We are always looking to expand our client base and actually around this room right now, I see many of our clients. So if you don't believe me that we're free and we're good, they'll vouch for me. Terry can vouch, Eileen can vouch. And what we do is all your business and transactional needs. We recognize that you are in fact businesses with legal needs and we are here to support you in every way we can. We really love nonprofits. That's it. Thank you, Judy. That was perfect. Eileen, followed by Kimberly, please. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Tommy. My name is Eileen Minogue, and I am the executive director for the Book Fairies. Um, I can definitely vouch for Judy and the nonprofit legal services that they provide. We've been benefiting from them, and we greatly appreciate them. The Book Fairies collects, most of you know, books that uh, are sit sitting on people's shelves, and we get them into the hands of individuals who don't have access to them. And I'll explain more as we present later. So Kimberly and then Sean, please. Hi everyone, it's nice to meet you. I'm excited to be here. My name is Kimberly. I am the director of Nonprofit Lighthouse. We are consultants that focus on nonprofits. Our services are primarily around marketing technology and development solutions. And we're going to be um, sharing with you about what we've been working on with Salesforce and the Book Fairies today. So it's very nice to meet you. Thanks for being here, Kimberly. I'm super excited. And brand new friend of mine. Well, I'm going to call you a friend, Sean. I hope you'd like, you'd like to call me a friend. Sean and then Susan. Yeah, my name is Sean Duclay. I, uh, I don't know if I'd call you a friend just yet, but uh, <laughs> my, so I'm the co-founder of Sail Ahead along with my brother. We actually founded it nine years ago. I'm 23, so that's still kind of crazy for me to think about. But uh, we are a veteran service organization. Our mission is to uh, take veterans to the water as a form of therapy to heal. You know, so as you said earlier, at least 22 veterans are committing suicide daily. So we have a huge part of our mission is our mates. And these are the name tags of 219 veterans who have all lost the fight. You know, more there, we have more casualties since 9-11 um, to our own selves than by the hands of the enemy. So this is 10 days worth of suicides, 219 name tags, it should, 220 if, if you're, you know, doing the math precisely. But so we carry them with us wherever we go. And the flag raising ceremony that Tommy and I were a part of uh, was in honor of one of those mates. So, so yeah, that's what we do. Thank you, Sean. And, and thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for all the work you do, Susan. And then Vicky, please. Hi, everybody. I am Susan Austin, and I work for... Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District, which is a community development nonprofit based in Newark, New Jersey. And we are working very hard to revitalize a neighborhood. And we do this through building affordable housing units, working with residents to help them advocate for themselves and to develop their leadership. We also offer arts and cultural programming, and we offer um, a real estate um, training program to help upskill residents. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for being here. Oh. And, and, you know, the power of networking, right? This is it. You know, I joined the Institute for Nonprofit Practice core uh, certificate program, as Tammy mentioned before we started. 
and uh, I get to meet all these new friends and contacts in the sector. So Susan, I'm thrilled that you're here. It makes it, it you know, makes this even cooler. Um, let's go to Vicki, then Terry, please. Hi, good morning, everybody. Vicki Elner. Um, I am a passionate advocate for aging issues, evidenced by being a founder of a not-for-profit organization that I ran for about 20 years. Uh, today, I sit on the board of directors of New York Statewide Senior Action Council. I'm also on their public policy committee um, as we advocate for funding, programming, and all various issues. They truly are a voice for senior issues. Statewide is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just, uh, they run three hotlines, one, a patient's, hot, uh, a patient's hotline, where people can call and get all kind of uh, help, support, et cetera, for issues related to the elder, in the elder arena. Thank it's great you. to be here. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Vicki. Let's go to Terry, then Sean Hurst, please. Good morning, everybody. Terry Magro. I'm with the Michael Magro Foundation. We are um, in our 17th year. I hear a pushback here. We're in our 17th year, and basically, on the mission of the foundation, it was um, started as a result of my two boys being diagnosed with cancer and Michael passing away from leukemia. So we um, basically help families to offset some of their medical expenses, co-pays, as well as some of their um, household expenses. So we pay bills directly to the vendor and our referrals come from social workers in pediatric oncology practices. Um, we work with about six hospitals locally, and then we've expanded across the United States to a variety of other hospitals. We also do some small wishes and we just recently did two for two young men that um, are not doing as well and wanted to see their friends or travel someplace. So we'll underwrite the airfare and get them to that location. So this week we uh, just successfully were able to do that for two different families. So it's a, a great relief to have them smile and be able to see their friend that they really wanted to see. So it's Terry Magro and the Michael Magro Foundation. And thank Judy, you. thank you for all you do. Thank you, Terry. Uh, and and I this is not self-serving, so I wanna just put this out there, but Terry and, and many of my friends here in the room have been on my program, Philanthropy and Focus. And I only tell you that because if you want to learn more about these other organizations like Terry's, we had a great conversation, Terry and I, um, maybe a month ago or so. So those you can connect with me or, or my assistant, Cecilia, who's in the room to get some of those episodes so you can check it out. Many of you have been on the show or many of you will be on the show. So uh, we'll, we'll get through that. Um, let's go to Sean, followed by uh, Roberta Rosenberg, please. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. I'm Sean Hurst. I'm the Regional Executive Director for New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania for Mothers Against Drunk Driving. So most people know what MAD is, um, but the mission of MAD is to end drunk driving, um, help fight drug driving, um, support the victims of these violent crimes, and to prevent underage drinking. So we provide comprehensive and compassionate services to injured and bereaved victims uh, for as long as they need it. We do a lot of education awareness um, with youth and parents in the community, as well as we are, um, you know, we're in the war room doing a lot of advocacy and legislative work, um, you know, on the local levels all the way up to the national level. Um, and we are considered a leader in um, helping to craft and get legislation passed to make our roads um, safer. And, you know, I was part of this group um, when it first got started, and then I was kind of off the grid for a little, and now I'm back, um, and I'm really just looking to reconnect and, you know, network and meet some more uh, fellow nonprofiters in the community. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for being here. Obviously, I saw my friend Mary C. It's a face light up as soon as you start talking, and you'll see why. Uh, so, Roberta, let's have you introduce yourself, Destination Accessible, and then Mary Chiametti, please. Uh, good morning, all. Happy to be here. I am the founder of Destination Accessible. We are a nonprofit that seeks to enrich the lives of people with mobility challenges. We provide free firsthand accessibility information of places people go for fun, museums, restaurants, theaters, parks. People can know before they go exactly what they're going to find when they get there so they don't have any unfortunate surprises like 
finding a bathroom that's not accessible when they were told on the phone that there is. We don't tell anyone where to go. We simply, we are a website and you can find out exactly what you're going to find when you get there. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. So Mary, followed by Tammy Ellen McLaughlin. Okay, hi everyone. Do you, you can hear me, right? Yes. All right, good morning. Um, I am Mary Chmetti and I am the founder of Don't Stall, Just Call, which is an alcohol poisoning education uh, mission. Uh, it was formed after the death of my son in 2015 um, from binge drinking. And what I found out after he was in the hospital for a week, I found out what was going on at college that we had no idea about. So what I believe is that through education, awareness, we can absolutely prevent senseless deaths. So since then, we created our nonprofit, the CTC Wellness Foundation, and um, Don't Stall, Just Call. And we, you know, I go out and speak to colleges, high schools, church groups, anyone, um, and we are saving lives. So I am grateful for this opportunity and I'm so happy to meet you all. So great, thanks. thanks. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. And, and um, we're going to go to uh, Sean Slevin. I think I said right after that, right? I said Mary, then Sean. We'll I think I was next. Did I say Tammy? You know what happened, Tammy? I'm sorry. I switched. So, Did we switch? People, people moved know. around. People moved on yep. my screen. Not, not like nobody did it purposely, but you are next on my list. Tammy, then Sean, then Milda. So yes, please. Um, but I just want, before you go, Tammy's been on Philanthropy and Focus and Mary will be on Philanthropy and Focus tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So check out the show. Tammy Ellen McLaughlin, followed by Sean Slevin, please. Thank you, Tommy D. Good morning, everyone. Tammy L. McLaughlin. I am executive director of Sober St. Patrick's Day Foundation. And our mission is to reclaim the day, which is really kind of just pulling back what happens on St. Patrick's Day all over the country, probably all over the world, and to celebrate Irish culture instead of binge drinking. Um, and I've been with the foundation for about two years, and I'm really enjoying it. And I've had a lot of support from Tommy D, which I really appreciate. I see some synchronicity here. So I'm loving that with Sean and Mary. And then um, you asked why I'm here, a couple of reasons why I'm here, but I love the flyer that was put together for this about client relationship management and donor relationship management. Um, our foundation, our little small, I'm not supposed to say that, but our small foundation, <laughs> we need help. So I'm here to hear all, all about it. And thank you very much. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you for being my friend. I sound like the Golden Girls. Thank you for being my friend. <laughs> I, I thought I wasn't going to sing in this meeting. All right. So Sean Slevin, followed by Milda, please. So it looks like the Sean's have it. There's a lot of Sean's. I got there's three four Sean's. There's Ian is Sean also. Oh, um, so there's four of us in the room here. So uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Sean Slevin with Swim Strong Foundation. We are... Uh, mission driven to reduce drowning and water-based accidents. Do that in two ways, traditionally in the water providing the swim skill, but out of the water providing an educational program, which um, I guess you were stealing my thunder, Roberta. It's also called Know Before You Go. And it is different and unique from other programs in that it focuses on environmental water safety. So, Swimming skills and water safety skills, which I grew up kind of thinking as one and the same thing, they are not. Clearly, they are complementary to one another, but they are different. And given our water world and how that is continuing to evolve, all of us, swim skilled or not, need this information. And um, Sean DeClay, I'm interested in speaking to you later because we also provide a program for veterans. So thank you all. Sean, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name of your nonprofit. Swim yes. Strong Foundation. I, I believe in the notes, um, I just needed everybody with a way for you to get in touch with me. Yeah, so let's um let's utilize the chat. This is the one of your only meetings this week where somebody's gonna say multitask during this meeting. Like that's my <laughs> like use this meeting, use the chat, connect with people, right? Because this is where you're going to get those connections. So go in there, use the chat, put it out there. I mean, Tammy just put the stuff for Sober St. Patrick's Day out there. I see Sean Duclay right above that. So use that chat, 
use it privately and use it publicly. Um, thank you. And just one second, just yep. we have to yep. say. So there's also reference to legislation in that chat, all right? And we have uh, legislation, Assembly Bill 728 and Senate 2207, which at the heart will mandate water safety training in all New York State schools K through 12. Need your support on that so you can find more um, through that link. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Um, after Sean, I said Milda and then Taylor, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's so exciting. I'm like, I'm trying to match you. I feel like it's a game. It's like, oh, she needs to talk about <laughs> <laughs> like, um, My name is Milda DeVoe, and I am the executive director of Penn Parentis. And we're an arts nonprofit. We're New York City based, but we are open to anybody across the country. Uh, we help writers stay on creative track after they have kids. Uh, the arts community is, in general, kind of very pro, you know, single people getting to go away on residencies for a long time. We try to recreate that online so that there can be tight communities of writers who intend to finish their work. Uh, and so if you know anybody who is struggling to be a writer or who is a writer who can't finish their book because they have you know, four kids or whatever, we have resources for you. So please check out our website at penparentis.org and we will help you. Thanks. I feel like that was a little personal there. Uh, the what? four kids and haven't finished the book yet. I, you know, I felt, I felt that one. But all right, I get it. I, I, I see what you're doing. All right, so let's go to Taylor and then Paul Rubin, please. Hi everyone. I'm Taylor Ulikowski. I work at Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District with Susan. So she introduced our organization a little bit before. Um, but just to recap, we work in community development. Um, I'm really passionate about the work that we do because it's through the lens of arts and culture and really resident driven. So the people that comprise our community. Um, and Susan is my supervisor, but she's also my mentor. So I think we can all appreciate how important, you know, supportive mentorship is, you know, in the work that we do. So I'm just glad to be here and thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, Taylor. I'm glad you're part of our community. And one of my favorite words used there is mentor. And we've talked a lot about that here in this room and certainly on my program about mentors and the importance uh, specifically in the sector. So in our sector, nonprofits, that is. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, really cool to see you. And, and thanks for being here again. Paul Rubin, uh, followed by Mike at uh, over at Ender's Isle, please. Hey, everybody. My name is Paul Rubin. I'm the executive director of Camp Good Morning. It's a free bereavement camp for Long Island children who are coping with the death of a parent and or sibling. Um, we have a camp coming up June 3rd through the 5th. So if somebody knows somebody who could benefit from our camp, um, again, it's absolutely free. Uh, please uh, have them contact me or have them go to the website. They can sign up right away. We uh, The uh, registration will be closing uh, either May 1st or we may extend it just a few days, maybe to May 8th. Um, but um, yeah, again, if you know anybody who can benefit from our from our services, from our free services, please let them know. And just one last thing, um, we have benefited greatly from Pro Bono Partnership. Um, they have been with us from the very, very beginning, which is about four years, um, and they do incredible work. So thank you, Judy. Thank you, Paul. And it actually really fills our heart with joy to be able to help you. My cousin lost her husband when she had a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And that kind of program would have been incredibly beneficial to my cousin's kids. So really, thank you for helping. Uh, thank you both. Judy, just make sure you put your information again in case anybody came in late. Um, I had the opportunity to, and I'm, I'm a little reserved now, I had the opportunity to go out to uh, Paul's camp um, last summer. Just an incredibly touching experience, Paul. And I had only a little bit of, of what went on that weekend that I was connected to. So thank you for all you do. And th I, again, this goes without saying, I mean, I'm overjoyed just being in this room with you all. This is these are, this is my part of the world. Um, so thank you. Thank you for being here. Plus, I love the goatee. It's a good look. I, I, by the way, I mean, I'm, I'm all about the, uh, the facial hair, as you can tell. So it's a good look, Paul Rubin. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. Let's go to Mike. Mike, we actually had a meeting one time, I think, with Tammy, right? Didn't we meet through Tammy? Yes, we did. Yep. So let's have you introduce yourself and then Yolanda Rabano Gross, please. Yeah, I'm Mike Smith from uh, Enders Island. Uh, it's an 11 acre island uh, down in Mystic, Connecticut. We're a religious nonprofit. Um, but uh, one of the things we do here is, um, well, lose my words now. Um, we have a recovery program for young men recovering from addiction. And we have a 
residencies here for it. And we also do, uh, well, just a lot of other stuff here. <laughs> a lot of, a lot, there's just a whole bunch. Well, thank you for being here, Mike. Appreciate you. Appreciate the work you're doing. And obviously, I, you could see in the room, it's all compassion and love here. And there's a lot of other organizations that could probably uh, be of service to you, you know, whether it be Mary or what Sean's doing over at MAD, obviously, uh, in, in this addiction space. And uh, I don't sell it in all my meetings, but I haven't had a drink in 11 years. And I think that's uh, an important thing to recognize, not because I'm so great, but just because uh, addiction is a real thing. And it's, uh, it's something we deal with every day. Um, so let's go to Yolanda and, and Ian. Uh, Ian, I know sometimes you have phone stuff. So if you're good, after Yolanda, please jump on and introduce yourself. Good morning. I'm Yolanda Urbana Gross, Chief Executive Officer at Options for Community Living, uh, based out of Ronkonkoma. But today I'm here in our Hempstead office. Uh, we do um, housing, care coordination, case management, financial assistance programs, and a bunch of other things for individuals, adults, and children with chronic physical and mental illnesses. And we're Long Island based, so everything from as far west as kind of Limbrook Valley Stream, that area, to all the way out to Riverhead. Um, and like we said before, uh, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary tonight. So. We're having a big gala tonight, which is kind of exciting in person, which is even more exciting. Um, and you said before to say what we need, uh, like everybody else, I need staff. Um, like everybody else, we're in a hiring crisis. Um, if anybody out there has, you know, people are starting to graduate college, you know, someone that's a new grad or looking for the human services field, send their resumes my way. Um, you know, it, it's tough. We're in a we're in a world where serving people, you know, we have to compete with McDonald's and Target. Um, and you know, at McDonald's they give you fries. I always say, I can't give fries. Um, but you know, if you know of anybody that's looking in this field, uh, especially we do have entry level positions. So if there's kids coming out of school that are interested, send them my way. I'll throw my um, email in the chat. Thank you, Yolanda. And 40 years, congratulations on, on the organization. And, and you know, talk about commitment. Um, the fact that you have a gala this evening and you're on this meeting because you're part of this community is, is speaks volumes to me, honestly. I mean, think about that. We all do these gala things and, you know, sometimes our hair is on fire and Yolanda is here with us. Big deal. So thank you for and thanks for, I love hanging out with you. I can't, that's why I'm forcing myself to get there tonight, you know. Um, it was so fun to see you on Tuesday. All right, so Ian Wilder, if you can introduce yourself, let me know. Uh, all right, I see you came off mute. Ian, and then uh, I think we hit everybody and then we get into our, our next part of the program. Ian Wilder. Hey, Tommy. Uh, Ian Wilder, uh, Long Island Housing Services. We are a over half century old civil rights organization focused on fair housing. Uh, what does that mean? It means uh, actually a bunch of things. If you saw the Newsday Long Island Divided series uh, exposing uh, discrimination against um, home buyers, that's the work we do. If you know somebody who's a person with a disability and they need a reasonable accommodation or a reasonable modification in order for them to uh, use their property, uh, including things like there's not appropriate uh, handicap spots, that's what we do. If you're in the fight for affordable housing on Long Island, at the base of the problem with not having enough affordable housing is fair housing problems. So that's what we do. What are we looking for? We are always looking for testers. We train them. And pretty much any adult, any demographic, any age, because when testers go out, it's kind of like a secret shopper. So we have somebody in a protected class, which is almost anybody. I'm in a protected class uh, because I'm male because I'm a father, because I'm married, because I'm Jewish. Those are all protected classes. And then we have a comparison test through somebody who's not, and we see the difference in the treatment that people get. That's a basic uh, description of it. Our testers love the work they do because they feel they're actually getting something done. So uh, reach out to me, lifairhousing.org. When I get to the office, I'll drop it in the chat. If uh, you're interested in being a tester and I can get you more information or you know somebody who is, thanks. Thanks, Thank Tommy. Oh, Thank by you. the way, let me join the course of people who love a pro bono partnership, as I say, on almost every call. Take That's it easy. Right. Thank you. And, and we love the chorus. And if you ever want to sing a duet with me, we'll figure that out, too. Uh, 
Um, I, look, I, when Melissa Greenberger was here, Judy, before you know you were in this role, we we would always just be like so jazzed when Melissa was talking about pro bono, and we're just as thrilled to have you here and being part of this community because, you know, I like free it's one of my favorite words I, it's tommy d and then free like those are the favorite words i have and then um you know the fact that organizations can benefit from legal services that your organization provides is is absolutely incredible and uh, you know talk about serving those who serve what a better way to do it right so I i'm i'm lucky because i trained melissa up i launched her on long island i was really sad when she left to go to licf but selfishly is the one who started us on Long Island. I'm really happy to be back. I missed my Long Island peeps. So we're thrilled to have you back and part so of much fun. Yeah. And we saw, I saw Melissa the other night. So yeah. and I know I didn't really get time to talk to her too much with at the Imagine Awards, but let's, let's move on. I think I hit everybody. I really did try to be diligent. If I missed you, please raise your hand. But as I look around my screen, I think I did. I think I got it. All right. So at this point in the program, you know, not to not to make her blush, but my my buddy, my pal, my collaborator on this, you know, Christine Deska, um, I, I always feel like you have to have somebody that you work with and partner with that fills in where where you sort of miss things and you can fill in where they might miss things. And, you know, on all the teams I'm on and all the collaboration I do, which is a lot, um, you know, Christine is, is always got my back and we, we we play really well together. And I'm, I'm so thrilled that we've been doing this together for such a long time. Um, why don't you, I do have your bio, which I'll do in a bit, but can you come off mute and introduce yourself real quick to the folks? And then we'll introduce um, uh, Kimberly and Eileen real quick. Great, great. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Christine Desta. I think I know mostly everyone. Tommy, thank you for the warm words. It, it really is a pleasure to work with you. I mean, we just get, sometimes you get lucky in life. I, I got lucky in life with my business partner, Frank Orzo, who many of you know, and Tommy is the same connection. Um, I think most of you know, my business is nonprofit sector strategies. We do a mix of strategic planning and board management services, and also um, sell a product called Bell's Board for nonprofit boards of directors. Um, but Tommy, I don't want to spend too much time on myself. Can I just talk about the topic and then I'll let you, you introduce the ladies? Yeah, you, the can. You, you, you totally can. I was going to tell a quick story about it real quick. And then you okay. want to talk about the topic. So basically what happened is I was interviewing uh, Eileen and some of her staff, Eileen Minogue from the Book Fairies, about uh, with regards to the Imagine Awards. And they talked to me about how structurally the business had changed by the implementation of salesforce.com and as i went and then i and when then we came to you and christine said we're going to survey our folks and see what they want to learn about and you all said we want to learn about like crm and and you know specifically salesforce or generally crm and i go i just had a call about this christine like <laughs> i just had a, a meeting like about this with eileen and and then in like eileen's colleagues are coming on and here's how it changed my part of the operation and here's how it changed my part of the operation i was like this is incredible. So that's like the universe, I say, smushing everything together. So um, go ahead, talk about the topic, if you could, please. And then we'll- Yeah, it, it's up. exactly that. It's just, it, we, you know, what Tommy and I strive to do is we want to bring ex subject matter experts to the table um, that you all are looking for. And this topic kept coming up over and over again. And we're just so lucky to have someone um, like Eileen, already part of our roundtable family, to then bring in someone wonderful like Kimberly, who she's been partnering with, to kind of tell the story of how they've been able to um, from a small organization, which many of you also are part of smaller organizations, really, and I, you know, to use Eileen's words, take one bite of the apple at a time or one bite of the cookie, whichever you're craving at the moment, but to really operationally um, create these efficiencies that are so important. I actually just had to draft a couple of different proposals around this, this very topic, because we all know, right, nonprofits our businesses, but mission driven businesses that have to put their revenues toward their mission, right? But that means the same efficiencies and efficiency struggles occur. And we know that smaller organizations tend to keep pushing these things down, pushing these things down. Well, Eileen is just such a wonderful example of a leader who came in and said, you know what, we need to prioritize this structural kind of reorganization. And I remember being in the warehouse and you saying, you wouldn't believe what I'm what I'm undertaking right now. And but she saw the vision for why it was important to do this and she found a partner in Kimberly. So I think Tommy and I are just really excited to be able to bring them to the table to talk through and and share with you their story of building this over time and how it's really helped the book fairies grow. And I hope, I think our hope is that 
um, those of you listening will find something that you can dig into for your own organization to start to improve your own efficiencies, you know, one piece at a time and kind of get out of the overwhelm state that many of us find ourselves in when we're so focused on our mission work. And it's really hard to take a breath and say, okay, but if I just, you know, made it a priority to get all my folks in Salesforce in this way, and then connected that to my donor management system, over time, what are you saving and, and how are you able to grow and then better achieve your mission? So I'll stop there and I'll let Tommy introduce our fabulous um, subject matter experts for this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for doing all that. And, and you know, uh, as I told you the story, how kind of it kind of happened, like serendipity wise, it, it, you know, this is just the way it's supposed to be. That's why these things happen this way. So um one source of truth is um, some, something I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about today because Eileen uses that when she talks about th this subject matter. But if you don't know Eileen Minogue and you're here in the New York area in the nonprofit world, then you need to know her. I, you know, you talk about servant leaders and talk about the people in this sector who are super busy in what they do, but then they volunteer to help out each other to do stuff like this. But I mean, just on a, on a one off. Um, Eileen I, I had a meeting with um, with me and a friend of mine on a board I sit on talking about this exact exact subject matter as a give back as a deposit into a relationship. So think about that. You know, this is the kind of people we hang around with. So she's certainly a proven leader in this sector, uh, in business management, program administration, fund development, and volunteer engagement. She was the co-founder and executive director of Patient Airlift Services. And she's been volunteering her time and talents to a number of nonprofit organizations for over 20 years, and uh, including serving on the board of the Massapequa Community Fund, which is an organization that has provided $1.9 million of direct local support since 2001, is currently the executive director of the Book Fairies. Eileen, I'm thrilled to have you here. Thank you for being friends with me. Thank you for being friends with this community. I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. And I'm going to introduce Kimberly right now, too. So, you know, when you talk in terms of having the right people on your team, which I talk about a lot, right? Having the right, some corporates would say like having the right seat on the bus or get you in the right seat on the bus. You know, you surround yourself with people who are really good at what they do. And I personally am going to be uh, having Kimberly do consulting work for me. So, you know, um, talk about stamp of approval with my own salesforce.com uh, situation. So jazzed about that. We had a meeting about it and uh, we're going to work through that now. So, you know, Eileen and Kimberly have a relationship, a historic relationship, and they'll talk about that today, I'm sure. But Kimberly is a creative professional driven to create change, inspire others, and help people succeed. She's worked independently for, with local and national nonprofits and launched Nonprofit Lighthouse with her partner, Sam, in 2020. And they, they bring to life their vision of, as a consulting group focused on marketing development and technology solutions specifically for our people, specifically for nonprofits. And she pairs a creative background with her technology expertise uh, for one of a kind problem solving solutions for her clients. And she's really looked at by her clients and those in her network as a translator. I get that because I'm, I'm not the tech guy. I need people to kind of, hey, explain it like I would understand, like not like a tech person is going to understand, right? And we're going to, I'm sure she'll be able to break it down and translate that uh, for us today. Now, this is kind of cute. Um, if <laughs> when she's not working, she spends her time uh, streaming a TV show or with her two cats, or or playing Nintendo, which um, I, I you know, which is cute to me because that's my generation, and my kids wouldn't even know what Nintendo is at this point. It's, you know, it's very funny. So Kimberly, Eileen, Christine, take it away. I'm going on mute. Let's get this conversation mm -hmm. going. Thank you so much. You're going to fill our heads, right, Kimberly? Um, what a great introduction. And I don't know that I'm an expert, but what I am an expert at is surrounding myself with really smart people who are way smarter than me in a lot of different areas. Um, a little background, Tommy and Christine told you a little bit about it, but I was co-founder for another organization, Patient Airlift Services. And uh, that started in my basement and I had nothing. And about a year and into it, I realized I needed a CRM and I learned about Salesforce. And that was really my introduction to Salesforce. Um, and then I spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money on it and learned a lot and made a lot of mistakes and took those lessons learned and brought them into the book fairies. 
when I came to the book fairies, Amy handed me, Amy, our founder, and I'm not speaking out of turn. She'll laugh when I tell you that she handed me two baggies of business cards and said, here's your contacts. And I said, oh my God, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so um, to that point, I realized what did I need to focus on and how, do, how was I going to be able to take that little bite of the cookie and, and get us to the point where we are today, three years later. And the first thing I did, and there are a lot of CRMs out there, and I'm, I'm not paid by Salesforce. I don't get anything from it. I'm just sharing what experiences I've had with it and the benefits that I've had to create, as Tommy says, one source of truth. And um, what I did is I got Salesforce right away, which is free for the first 10 users. So it's free for 10 users and you just have to apply for it. And I was able to get that. The first thing I did was start using it as a CRM. It's agile, it's um, you know scalable, it's the native out of the box features are great. Um, so I'm just gonna actually, can I share my screen? I can, I have permission to share, right? Yes, I do. I'm going to share my screen because I am a visual person and I feel like people need to see um, what we're talking about. So the first thing I did was talk about your contacts and your accounts and your, your relationship management. And I'm using Christine as an example today of most of this came out of the box and I'm gonna ask Kimberly to hop in whenever I'm speaking out of turn because she does interpret for me. <laughs> she, is, she is my expert with Salesforce and um, has take, taken us to another level. We put Christine in as an account she goes in as an account and because she's an individual, she also has a household. So if her husband, her kids, whatever were in here, they would also be connected as a household. So when you're going to do thank you letters, acknowledgement letters, you could do things to a household. You can set up um, greetings in there. It really helps with your mail merges. Um, and then what I did is what's my connection to Christine? Who is she connected to? How do I know her? Um, so that if I'm not here tomorrow, the whole purpose of this when I do these things are so that there's historical data, there's information and connectivity that if I'm not here tomorrow, the mission is the most important thing. How is somebody else going to come in and fill in? So I go over to her organization and what pulls up, I'm just going to make this my full screen, sorry. What pulls up under her organization is nonprofit uh, profit sector strategies. So I can go in here and I can go into her account. And if she had five other uh, people at nonprofit uh, sector strategies, they would show up there. So there's that connectivity of who that individual is, who that person is, that contact is, as well as the organization that they're connected to. Um, I can show her as an individual, as a holistic view of her. I could see her as someone who donates. Here's a donation that she had given to us. I have her information here as far as her home address. Um, I can show donations for those in uh, development. You can see first gift, last gift, best gift, all that kind of stuff is all available in here. Um, and then the number of gifts calculated by everything that's attached to the account. So that's nothing that you have to input. That's all automatically calculated for you. So as new donations come in, that contact will update with the new numbers and values. So that information will be live. Thank you. See, interpretation. <laughs> also, there's um, a volunteer management portion to this that helps you management the people that you're working with, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but that volunteer management all lives in that holistic view. So if, there, if we had a membership portion, which um, we're, we don't use it currently, but we're talking about using it, uh, we could do that there. Um, and then there's the volunteer status. So when you have somebody volunteering, you can ca capture their hours and those numbers roll up. And Kimberly, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the roll ups for volunteerism. Yeah, yeah, those get very in depth. So we're able to track when did they first volunteer? When did they first sign up to volunteer? When did they most recently volunteer? Do we have their signature? Um, so their signature referring to their waivers. So making sure that, you know, we have everything recorded as far as documentation that, um, you know, that we are prepared to have them in the warehouse, that everything um, is on file and prepared for them. We have their emergency contacts, whether or not they need a volunteer coach or any other sort of special accommodations. 
anything like that, their availability, we're able to track all of that really. So, so thank you so much. So that was, um, did you wanna- Judy, have, Judy, yeah. Judy has a quick question, Judy. Yeah, yeah I just said, so in this volunteer section, the lawyer in me is asking, you can acknowledge that they've signed the waiver. Can you attach or link right to that document so that you can easily get your hands on it if necessary? We actually can, yes. Um, Eileen, if you wanted to um, pull up anybody who would have a waiver, um, um, I'm trying there, to I'd there, have would be a, there would be a hyperlink to the to the waiver on yeah, anybody. I, that does I'm just have trying to think of like there. I'd have to pull up the name and I'm like yeah, going blank okay. right now. But there is a hyperlink. Where would that be? Where would uh, that it's the it? bottom left of the volunteer section. So that volunteer signature right there, that would be a hyperlink and you'd be able to go directly to the waiver. Which is a great, so so when I first came in, we had all these names and information. So I actually had a volunteer actually go through every business card that I had that I thought was like, you know, valuable. And we put individuals in. Um, but what we've done now is if you go to our website and you click volunteer, you would sign up to volunteer. And that's where at the end of that, the waiver pops up and then people sign that waiver. The beautiful thing about it is, is that everything from that document dumps into our Salesforce um, platform and there's no data entry. So that right there costs me no employee, no, no volunteer time, no anything. And it's all captured. And to Judy's point is that the documents are there. The legal part of it is there. And that was all done between Kimberly and we do have a... Um, a third person that works with this on us, his name is Stefan. He's more of like the back end coding kind of stuff. Um, and, and the two of them, we just work together on it. And uh, that enabled us to dump all of our contacts in there. And so now moving forward, once I took that little bite of the cookie to get our current, um, don't, you know, constituents, however, however they're related to us into the system, moving forward, we had built the functionality so that moving forward, everything's just auto dumping. So we invested that time in the in the past to get them in. And then moving forward, we were in real time and everything was working well for the um, contacts. What we next did was I asked Kimberly to work with me. We downloaded our donor perfect. We got a spreadsheet. We laid out the fields and we uploaded them into our Salesforce um, instance. And that is how we got all of these um, you know, don't donor um, fields in here. But Kimberly, can you just explain to them out of the box donor management? These fields are pretty much we didn't really touch it, correct? Uh, yeah. So out of the box, the donor rollups are there. Um, the classy fields in that donor information are the only ones that um, are custom. Okay. that section. Yeah. So, so out of the box, you get, you know, 99% of what's here. Again, it's free. You don't have to touch it. Um, but what I did, the next step I did was um, we uh, were very transparent. We really didn't have money. So we needed to fundraise. Um, so I said, we don't have the time, the people, the bandwidth to do a gala. So we did a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising event and we came up with a peer-to-peer -peer platform. The first one I used was a platform called Rallybound, which has now bought, been brought over by, I think, one cause, but they got a little expensive. So we now use Classy. And right now we're in the middle of doing our readathon. And this is our Classy readathon page. And Classy dumps right into Salesforce. So anybody who is going to make a donation or become a fundraiser, anybody who interacts on this site dumps right into Salesforce. It does cost me money for Classy, but it would cost me money for any peer-to-peer -peer platform that I'm using. Um, we've tried Give Lively in the past and some other ones, but this one, the investment in Classy allows me to dump right into Salesforce and have real-time information in Salesforce, as well as you know the acknowledgements and all the other good stuff that comes along with Classy. So I do pay for Classy, and if anybody has information that they want to know about that, I'm happy to answer those questions as I move forward. But any of these donors, uh, I'm sorry if I'm scrolling past here really quick. Um, I'll talk to you about sponsorship management, and I want to keep it um, high level. Um, but all of these teams and all of the connectivity 
are all here in Salesforce. So I'm just gonna, um, Kimberly, what do you suggest I do? Just go into sales um, to Jim Joy? Yeah, sure, we could do that. And then his campaigns. Yeah, so this is our board member. Um, And so he has, he's part of a campaign and you can look at campaigns and you can view campaigns um, and hierarchies of campaigns. You can have, so for the people who are worried about accounting, you can set it up as campaigns and then have, um, you know, you can have your peer to peer campaigns. You can have your um, straight donations. I, I actually have fundraisers for Facebook as, as a campaign so I can see how much money came in from Facebook, but um, the joys of reading is actually his team. And I can see how this team, it's the, the readathon. I can go into it. I know it's from Classy. I could see the, um, the members that are part of this campaign. So I don't want to get too, too much into the weeds, but there's a whole hierarchy for that. Um, the campaigns are part of Salesforce, they're free, they're out of the box. We're just using fields that are native to Salesforce. Um, I spoke a little bit about it in the past that when I was at um, my previous organization, we spent a lot of money, a lot of money on customization and doing a lot of different things that every time Salesforce updated, we had to make sure that things were uh, in place or that we were checking any glitches that might have had. And I said, I'm not doing this. First of all, I don't have the money. And I know that Salesforce has native fields that we can utilize to the best of our ability um, for a much uh, greater, less cost. And that will be sustainable past me, past Kimberly, past whomever. Because the good thing is, is that when things are out of the box, Salesforce admins can come in and figure it out. So that's why we came from that. Um, does anybody, do you want to stop there, Christine and Tommy, or uh, to ask any questions about um, yeah. contacts? And I, I mean, I just, I'd like to make this conversational. So if people have questions, feel free. I just put this, in the <coughs> feel, feel free to pop in as necessary. And I think Christine, it looks like you want to say something, Christine. Yeah, I was just going to say from the standpoint of an organization that may not have kind of delved into a CRM at all yet. Um, when you think about kind of where you started, and I love how you engaged a volunteer to do some of your data entry. Um, it sounds like you started because Amy handed you those bags. <laughs> you were starting with, all right, who are our important relationships to capture here? Um, one thing I love about Salesforce, I use it as well, um, but there are others, but Salesforce in particular, is instead of searching through email for how, what the connectivity is with the contact, um, Salesforce also connects to your Outlook email or whatever your email provider is as well, right? So you can kind of see wait, what are the tentacles that led me to this particular donor or person. Um, and by the way, it looks like I'm due for a donation. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. Listen, you, you guys are doing a lot. But yes, to your point, that's a great point because you can have an extension on your Outlook where you can be you putting in your um, emails and you can, um, everything can dump. So the other thing was that all of our relationships and all of our trails and any historical data were held in Amy and our program coordinator's emails. So if I said, who's Tommy Demisa, what's our connection to him? They would be like, oh, let me look. And they would search their email. I'd be like, oh my God, if we ever go down, we're in trouble. So you can, here is your um, activities in, in your email. So if I wanted, to, if anybody wanted to know what kind of conversation I was having with Christine, um, this is, you know, our conversation with the round table. So I have the functionality to either have the extension on my, out, on my Outlook or I, I have a special email address that I could just blind CC anything that I want dumping into her contact and it dumps in there. So you capture history and data. Um, it's not in somebody's personal computer or somebody's email that you, know, you switch servers and you're like, oh, we lost that whole history. Everything is here and you can pick and choose what you want to capture in here. But this connectivity here is, um, I think it's so valuable because I could say, oh, when was the last time so-and-so talked to, you know, this person or what was this about or what did they say? That whole history is here. And I think that that's fantastic. So mm -hmm. we've talked about individuals and connecting them to their organizations. 
um, and, and the whole holistic view that we can have for those individuals. Um, and then we added in our donors and that was a great thing. And then we have past donors. We have, how do you get money? It's grants. So we're able to, um, I'm just going to go in here. So we have a grant that we submitted to target and yeah. I can just before you get into the donor mm -hmm. piece and how you set that up, I just want to mm -hmm. see it. Sean, did you want to ask your question? Tommy wrote in the chat that you have a question. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. It's okay. Oh, no. you. you can't see everything at once when you're presenting, believe me. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So um, I have been attempting to use e-tapestry in the past and mm -hmm. also um, NetSuite, which is an Oracle program. Both of those are way too much for our little organization. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a total epic fail on both mm -hmm. accounts. We couldn't even figure out, and, and I'm not the one that's doing it. I have a volunteer that's helping, um, but she's a bright woman. And we couldn't even figure out how to get a report written. Everything had to go back to those organizations, you know, to the help desk um, to get reports written. It, it was just a debacle. So um, I have been using all along eye contact. And there's like 7,000 contacts plus already in there, but it's limited. Uh, I wasn't clear if, if Salesforce could operate on its own or if you needed to combine it with a donor management software program. Are, the two, or is there, are there two things coming together or is, is one able to Manage all. Do you want to grab that, Kimberly? I you want to explain because you yeah, want to go ahead. Yeah. Um, so most donor management needs can be addressed in Salesforce. There's also um, within the last year, Salesforce has come up with their own um, like more robust actual like donor management platform um, properly. Um, that's actually called Elevate. That's an additional um, price. So the Salesforce platform is free. Um, and what we're showing for the most part is um, out of the box free functionality. Um, so as far as recording gifts and things like that, that's out of the box. Um, if you needed to be able to actually like process gifts through Salesforce, um, so charge credit cards, things like that, that's something that they've actually added within the last year, but that's not something that would be Free. So if you have something else where you're able to charge credit cards, um, do your ACH wire transfers, things like that through, um, then you would be able to handle all the gift entry and recording through Salesforce 100%. If you needed that component where you're actually processing gifts, you would need to um, probably talk to like a, the Salesforce sales team about um, pursuing Elevate or a different um, donor management platform like Classy or something similar in conjunction with Salesforce. And Did we I do just a question. Uh, but yes, I just, just sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to add one thing. We do have Donor Perfect. Uh, I'm sorry, QuickBooks Online. We do use QuickBooks Online for um, our accounting, um, report, all those different types of reportings. Um, but Classy through Stripe dumps into QuickBooks Online. You know, we have to do the dump to, to it, but that also minimizes the amount of dual entry for us. So we do have QuickBooks Online and we have Salesforce and we kind of merge up, like match up the two. We try to, you know, um, make sure that they balance out. Um, so QuickBooks Online is my source of truth for my 994 because that has a more robust ability to break it down for your 990s. Um, and, and your accounting functionality, um, but it's not, I, I have a volunteer that does my QuickBooks and it's not a lot of hours. I mean, she does it for me. Um, the bulk of the time is getting checks or ACHs into sales, into QuickBooks. But um, so there is, that is the one time when I do have dual entry, if it's, there's a check or an ACH or something like that, a benevity, um, you know, that's when I have dual entry. And then one final question on this. Mm -hmm. Can you, I'm not sure how to phrase this. Is there a way that you can tell the effectiveness of 
a campaign in Salesforce. Really, yeah. um, so eye contact will allow you to, in very high level, i.e., X number of percentage, you know, opened the, the email, Y number actually clicked through, but you really can't get any more granular than that, that I'm aware of. What can you do with Salesforce? On that so I'll, I'll let Kimberly uh, answer that, but we, I didn't get to that part yet, but um, we also have our marketing and communications are done through um, Salesforce. We re recently switched from Constant Contact to MailChimp because MailChimp has functionality that will enable us to um, go in and um, segment our, the people we're mailing to. And everything is done through Salesforce on their um, on the connectivity. So um, I'm trying to think, uh, Kimberly, you want to take that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So with campaigns in Salesforce, um, Campaigns primarily started as um, as kind of how you're saying for for marketing purposes. Um, so, you know, I I reached out to somebody and they responded. So um, campaigns have campaign members, so that's a way of connecting contacts that are in the system to the campaign, and then those members have statuses. So those statuses initially start with sent, and then as um, those contacts engage with the campaign, whether it's making a donation, volunteering. If they get attached to the campaign in any other way, that status automatically updates from sent to responded. We can also add um, additional statuses for the campaign. So if if there's something custom for that campaign where somebody is going to be a donor or somebody is going to be an attendee or a speaker, um, you can add all of those statuses and attach those individuals to the campaign as such. So we use campaigns to really track multiple levels of engagement um, as far as marketing and the opportunities. So there's there's different levels of the influence of the campaign. Great. We've got two other questions too on deck here. How about um, we go to Ian and then Paul. Morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for giving us information about Salesforce. I always wondered about it. We already have uh, a legacy relationship with um, Network for good. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that all the functionality you're talking about is already built into a program like that, uh, though we don't use nearly enough of it, with including the email and everything else. So why build from scratch on Salesforce rather than use some dedicated and I'm not saying network for good is perfect, rather than use some 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 uh, online program that's already dedicated to nonprofit fundraising. You can use whatever you want. We're not here to promote sales. No. I'm just telling you what we, what worked for me, because I thought that it had every aspect of what I needed for it. Okay. Um, so you, I mean, if network I, for good is great, then I would love to see a presentation. <laughs> maybe well, like, I, maybe there's someone here that would prefer network for good. And I, I, I will tell you network for good had gotten money for Gates foundation. And for two years, we had a consultant for free because mm -hmm. we got into so and i'm not saying it's better i really don't know enough and i don't have enough time to figure out what's better uh, so i'm just i didn't know if you'd experience with with other programs to to know like why one over the other that's all i was asking no, I, yeah i, I, I have, didn't think you were here to promote it and yeah, i appreciate no. you spending time to explain thank you yeah that's all right um uh, listen i say use what works for you if you think it's working then definitely uh work do it. Um, I didn't know Network for Good was free. So if it's free, well, then no, that's... it's not free. It, it, no, it's it's not it's not free. They had a program that if you get into like a one year group and then they extend it for second year, uh, they will give you extra serv They will give you extra services and stuff if you're already on, or if you haven't been on, they'll give it to you for free for that year. But normally, it's not free. No, we pay for it. We pay for the service and, and we pay for, you know, each donation, you know, we pay the, was it the 3% VIG and the whole deal. It's not free. It's definitely not free. Okay. <laughs> so that's the, that's the same with, um, you know, we're paying for classy, classy's our, yeah. you know, our, um, 
I can't think of the word right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. And Salesforce, yeah. I will tell you, you can apply to Salesforce to have them do projects for you. And if they're approved, okay. they'll have Salesforce requires their admins and people to um, donate their time. So you can also apply for that with Salesforce. Thanks. Great question. Yeah, no worries. Like, what I would like to add is just, I don't, I'm not too familiar with the network for good platform. I, um, I have been hearing more and more about it, but um, I haven't actually seen it functionally. Um, some of the things that we haven't really been able to touch on today because this, you know, it's a pretty broad overview of what we've been working on. Um, but really the, the key benefits to Salesforce would be the level of customization um, I don't think is available with any other platform. So Salesforce, you can really build it to be anything you want it to be. You can remove every single field and replace them with completely new ones if you wanted to. You can build robust automation so that if you enter something here, it appears in several other places and sends emails to you and to your clients and to several other people. Um, you really have sort of that flexibility and um, opportunity to really build exactly like your dream. Anything that you could really picture, you can get done in Salesforce. And I find that a lot of organizations wind up using multiple tools to get done what they can do just in Salesforce. So yeah, it's exactly. agile, it's flexible, it's scalable. And um, so we touched on the Paul, I, I'm gonna let you get your question, but we touched on the um, MailChimp and that stuff. Um, and then I will go into program management, which I think is the what you're talking about, Kimberly, is how we can really skip, scale, the, scale it and have it all once one place. Paul, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, and how no, are you? No, I'm, I'm so good. How are you? Good. Um, so, you know, uh, as someone sitting here, my head is ready to explode. Um, where, where um, you know, where does one start? I know it starts with baby steps, but where did you start in terms of um, Salesforce or any, it doesn't really matter what the CRM is, but where does one start? Because it, I, I think that that is such a huge step and um, just, just being able to bite off just a little bit would probably ease anyone's anxiety. Um, so where, where did you start and what would you, um, what would you suggest doing? I would definitely start with your contacts and your accounts, get them in, make it be a, that's, you know, your straight CRM, customer relationship management, how are you, re, you know, relating to your customers, get the contacts in, get the accounts in, affiliate them and do that. I'm here three years for the first year, um, for the first six months, that's all I did was worry about getting our our current people in, and I had volunteers doing it. I gave them business cards. Kimberly helped me. We had um, spreadsheets of our contacts. We laid them out, and then she just uploaded them in so that they laid into the to the contacts. Um, that was the first thing I did. Get them in, and then I started using my email to make sure I captured my trails, my email trails. So we were just using that. Then the next thing I did was I worried about my donors. How do I get my donors in? How do I interact with my donors? How do I be able to create reporting for my donors? Um, and that was what I did next was I I've created the, um, I got a peer-to-peer -peer platform, which is what we use Classy for. And it's also our donate now on our donation page. So when people are donating, it's just dumping into your connect a like a uh, processor, like a classy or something like that to your website. So it's just dumping in. So now you already have any contacts that come in. You go to the Imagine Awards and you get a business card. The next day you have a volunteer go in and put them in. You can see how, where you met them. You can have that whole thing. Then when you have your donors on your Donate Now page, that's just going to dump right in. So now, you you know, there's a little bit of skin in the game, you know, cost to that because you're going to have to pay for the processor. But you have a processor now, I'm sure. So find one that can dump into Salesforce. Or it, there are some that will download and upsert into Salesforce or, or Network for Good or whoever you're using. So you have your contacts, you have your accounts, and then you have your donors. That's, the, that's how I did it. Um, and that was extremely helpful for me because now I was able to um, 
you know, get all of the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising activity done. And I didn't have to, um, you know, we increase the bubbling point that we were already at at, at, at the um, office. Thank and you. Then, and then you're welcome. And then the next thing we did was we worked on volunteers. Um, we tried to figure out how do we get the volunteers in there? Cause we didn't really have, we were doing everything through email, emailing all of our volunteers. Do you want to sign up? When they signed up, we had to go into spreadsheets. We literally, our, my program manager had 25 spreadsheets that she was working off of for any kind of activity. I, my mind was like blown that she was able to do it. I'm beyond impressed. And like I said, I, she's way smarter than I am. Eileen, can um, I interrupt you? If I could interrupt real quick. So mm -hmm. having some, you know, little inside knowledge of having these conversations with you and your team, you know, there's somebody on your team who is doing some work on the weekends to get things done going into Monday that was just because candidly, it was an inefficient way of doing things to what you're speaking about. So if we think in terms of, you know, of course, this is going to be a benefit to improving donations and, and relationships with our folks. But let's talk, if you could, for a quick second or two about uh, quality of life for employees, maybe about that and how that might, whether it be us as leaders of these organizations or our people. Well, that I'm a firm believer in it. And I will tell you mistakes I've made in the past was to not um, put enough emphasis on work-life uh, management. Um, it's, it's a huge mistake I personally made and it took uh, its toll on me personally. And I really believe that employees need to have, you know, um, a work-life balance. So I, the one thing I realized was our staff were, um, because of the inefficiencies and our inabilities, and we were using Google Docs and Doodle and all kinds of different things, um, our program coordinator was working on the weekends. So that what we've done here, and and um, I'm gonna, I'll work into this right now is our program management has now for the last almost year we've been working exclusively after we got our volunteers into the system. The next thing we did is, well, why do we need the volunteers? It's for program management. And so we really, um, I love my board. They're great. They allowed me to literally step back. We stopped, not fully, but stopped the flow of what we were doing for two months. And we really sat down and we figured strategy and what will help us to take this time to step back so that we can move forward. And stepping back was really taking a breather to figure out how do we get our programmatic information into this system and enable us to really save time, be more efficient and professional and just increase our mission. And, and, and really it helped us a lot. I, I can't say enough about finding the right people, Kimberly and Stefan who've helped us. And my team is phenomenal. They've dedicated a lot of time and energy to figuring out. And what we did is we took, I say it all the time, like I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm, you know, throwing a lot at you, but this is over three years I've done this, starting with, you know, little steps at a time. Um, the program part is, we're still working on it. We're still every day getting better and adding more efficiencies to what we're doing. Um, but you know, it, it, it definitely has made everybody's the boiling point at our warehouse and our was through the roof. And it's just calmed down because you really need to um, make sure that you're focusing on your mission, that the mission isn't swallowing you, because if it swallows you, you're just going to implode. And we were at that point. And now what we do is we have guardrails. We, uh, we say, what's our mission? Are we having mission drift? And everything I do is core to our values of what we're doing. And I say, is this, go is this within our values? Is this within our guardrails? And does is this going to help us move it forward? If it's not, we cut out the junk, cut it out, cut it out. And it's really helped us to really, everybody feels like they have a voice. Um, and they feel like they're able to um, really, we've moved the mission forward um, and we've set goals that are attainable. They're not going to, you know, have us having heart attacks <laughs> and uh, really just um, reachable. So no, oh, I, I know you yeah, had a question. Did you have a question? I do. I had to find okay. my mute button. Um, <laughs> I so I actually have three questions, but they're all one word answers uh, and mm -hmm. one or short, short. Uh, so one is, can you export the data? I'm assuming there's some way to do yes for that. Yes. And mm -hmm. the other is, uh, what is 
the threshold for needing to pay for this Salesforce? Like I, you said, it lets you have 10 users. Mm -hmm. Does that mean 10 logins or mm -hmm. like how? And so then is there any other thing? Like if you hit a maximum of donors or a max, is there like a maximum data that they do before so there, they make it? There pay? are, uh, there are maximum data thresholds, but they are excessive. It would be rare that a small org, let alone a large org would reach those. Um, they're pretty generous. Um, and if so, there are ways to um, pay for additional do, allotments. Do you happen so. to know a number of like contacts that they let you do ish? Like, is it uh, like 10,000 or is it like 4,000? Like, oh, um, it's, it's hundreds of thousands, oh, okay. if not millions. It's, it's very large. That's <laughs> yeah. Very like, good. And the, the Girl third, Scouts use it. Like large companies use it. So then, uh, well, yeah, but they probably pay for it. The Girl Scouts. Well, at a certain point, you do have to pay for it. But that was I, my I'm question. Very, I was like, yeah. Where yeah, that? I'm very frugal so, and we haven't gone past the 10 users. Awesome. Then the, the last, I love it. The last um, question is, um, is it possible to bifurcate the kinds of volunteers so that you would have a different NDA or a different, um, you know, release form for different kinds of volunteers? Yes. Absolutely. And that's um, it. Question. Yeah. So uh, just to, to touch on your, your first point about exporting the data. So we can actually, we can schedule, um, regular uh, exports of the data. So you can do that on a monthly basis. You can do a backup of everything within Salesforce if that's something that is something your organization needs. And then you can also have custom reports built on literally any data. And then those reports can be exported at any time as well. So those can be set up for email subscriptions to be sent to you regularly or um, just manually exported as well. So, And these are reports that we can create in here. There's a whole bunch of uh, reports that are in here. Um, the one thing I didn't touch on is I actually manage my board and um, their give get and all that kind of stuff. And here you can do soft credits. So I know how much we're at, how who's who's where and where we're at, um, which I could show you because we're just starting it. But this is one report that um, Kimberly has created for us. But this can oh, tell you. Eileen, please don't uh, please don't share confidential data with the world. <laughs> what, pers what personal data did I show? Well, just don't show what people are donating or their personal contact information, if you can avoid it. <laughs> Sorry, that's the, that's your lawyer speaking out for you. <laughs> okay, you so let's go back into, let's go into volunteers then. Um, <laughs> find Island. volunteers. Um, what you were talking about, uh, the different volunteers, you can go into active volunteers weekdays and you can go here and then you can, uh, it'll come up with the different types of volunteers. We have them segmented and you can go from there. Um, so that's really interesting and um, a good Did way to set manage this up it. or was this out of the box? This, this, by, this, this volunteers, um, widget is out of the box, um, but you have to add the skills. So our skills are custom for the book fairy. So there's book drives and bookkeeping and things like that. So um, you would be able to add skills like um, mentorship and, uh, writing and, and whatever would be more relevant um, and then whatever availability windows work. So you can customize the, the values, but the actual um, function is right out of the box. Mary, and did you have your question answered in the chat about volunteer hours? Oh, I want to make sure we get to that. Sorry if we... we... Um, I think it was answered because just want to make it sure three years it took three years to get this up and running to where it is right now i'm amazed at everything but i'm also sitting here thinking oh lord i need like so much help and uh i, I don't even know i'm a little overwhelmed right now <laughs> but yeah. thank you you're all doing a great job i'm gonna try to do something <laughs> And I would just, if I, if the best advice I can say to everybody is find a system where you can at least get your relationship management going. Cause to me, that's like the most important thing so that you can, um, you know, see if you were to leave tomorrow, would somebody know who Eileen Minogue is, what your relationship is and what past conversations have been. That's really important. I'm sure you have some sort of donor management system. If they don't talk to each other, if you don't, okay. Uh, <laughs> this, I mean, this out of the box 
provide you with basic information for donor management. You can look at somebody, see how much they've given. I you mean, know. you are providing so much information right now. I am so appreciative of it. And the big thing is like network for good. Uh, you know, they keep, you know, asking, asking, you know, contacting me. And it's all about money. And I literally started with zero dollars. And I also left my job. And I also really don't make any money. And it's all like volunteer. So I need to figure out what that next step is and mm -hmm. um, and how we're going to operate. And uh, But this is really helpful. And I think this is going to be something that I look to use, Salesforce, because it seems like it's doable and manageable, you know, with the 10 logins. I just love that. So, and, and it has, um, you know, there's Salesforce offers, they call trailheads. For, so if you have a technical student that wants to come in and volunteer for you, um, I originally started Salesforce with just an employee that was technically savvy. Um, so there's trailheads, Kimberly, you can attest to this, that there's tools that somebody can, if they want to take the time, they can educate themselves. And they can they can do a lot of the stuff for you. Am I correct, Kimberly? I, I absolutely might, recommend, oh. if possible, if you have somebody in house that is technically savvy, having them learn and being sort of like the Salesforce person um, to to go to and answer those questions. Because having somebody who's who's really on it and and owning it um, is really important throughout the process. Can, can I ask you one other question, Kimberly? Yeah, of course. So like I do, and I'm sorry, everybody that's listening to this, and I hope I'm not offending you all. But um, so I do have an IT guy, our board, everybody is a volunteer and he is awesome and does so much stuff for us. But I think what you're saying is I need to have that intern who focuses just on this. Is that what you would say? I mean, Kimberly and I mean. focuses on it or or has it as a priority or um, without making it a priority it, it's hard for I feel like it often falls to the wayside and then it's not it's not as useful as it could be so having having somebody who's focused on it um, and really making sure that it's as good as it could be is really important because especially when it comes to data integrity as well you want to make sure that that everything is exactly what you need it to be so Hey, I just want to jump yeah. to Susan. She's been waiting patiently to ask a question. Um, Susan? Oh, good. You're off me. Oh, no problem. Thank you. So, you guys, this has been very helpful, and I thank you for your time and um, sharing this information. I was just curious to know um, a little bit more about project management in Salesforce, and how does that work, and what does that look like? You want to mention that? Go ahead. Sure. Um, so what we've been doing with the book fairies has been uh, highly customized for their program. And so um, they take requests for books and then they send the books out. And so what we've built um, has been around the volunteer application in Salesforce, which is another free add-on that's called Volunteers for Salesforce. Um, and we also use the orders object. And so we've really built our program around that and so we take in an order and then we organize the volunteers around that but there is a program on it program management module um, for the nonprofit cloud as well um, and that has more of a focus on um, client-based services and um, case management and those those type of things if that's something that you're interested in but that's not something that we've implemented here with the book fairies but I can get you information on that if that's something that you're interested in. Do you know if that is a, a paid cost expense yeah, or? The program management module is also free. So that's part of the nonprofit, um, the nonprofit cloud. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mike, we've got Mike's hand up as well. Mike, you have a question? Yeah, I was just curious if either of you are uh, looked into or checked out a uh, Bloomerang before. It's another uh, CM, I believe. I'm, I'm somewhat familiar yeah. with Bloomerang, not too familiar now. Is that what you're using? Yeah, that's what I was brought into. Uh, well, I'm the IT director on the island here, and I only started a couple of months ago, so I've been 
taking crash courses on how to do all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and we did look into Bloomerang and it was something that we were going to do uh, when we were looking at Give Lively as well. Um, and because, uh, you know, the pandemic hit and we were like, you know, free is good. <laughs> um, so Give Lively is something that, uh, Mary, if you want to write da that down, that's something that you might want to look at too, because I do believe that they have an interaction with um, Salesforce. If, I think Kimberly, they do. Um, yeah. But, you yeah. know, like, Blackboard, Salsa, Neon, there's there's a bunch of them and people love them. So I'm not here to promote any one. I'm just trying to set, for me, I'm just trying to share how I just took one little piece at a time and started with the one, the contacts and the accounts, went to the you know donors, went to the volunteers, and now we're working on program management. And the program management I have up here, this is like our calendar. This is you know, a del one day's deliveries and pickups of our books, and we can manage it here through orders. Orders um, is a field and for Salesforce and Kimberly and Stefan work with us. They listen to us and we said, we need this and we need that. Um, you know, all of this is costing me, it cost me money to have Kimberly and Stefan working with me. But what I love about this is, you know, major companies use this functionality, a lot of the functionality that's in here. Um, Bank of America, you know, lots of big companies use this. So I feel like I'm getting um, really great technology at a little bit of the cost for it. And there's also opportunity, Mary, and anybody else that's out there, you can get grants to help you with your technology. So if you're able to articulate the value of what your um, technology um, platform is that you're looking to do will do for your organization and your mission. A lot of people will um, support that as well. Um, this is Christine. I just want to jump in for a moment before I turn it back over to Eileen and Kimberly for, I guess, what the top three takeaways they might have. Um, from my perspective, I know um, many of the leaders, you know, who are on our call today and in our roundtable family, you all have so much on your plate. I hope that you can come away thinking about what could be your first bite of the cookie. Um, what volunteer could you engage? What schedule could that volunteer get on to help with data entry? We know the garbage in, garbage out, you know, tagline, and that's that's not what we want, right? We want the data integrity Kimberly mentioned and where and there's always a starting point for that. There's always a starting point and it's always important to manage these relationships, grow these relationships, um, but it is hard to get started sometimes. And so hopefully, you know, Eileen has been just so transparent about the time that she's dedicated over a three year period, you know, to really take that one step at a time to improve the efficiencies of an organization that has been consistently growing. I mean, look at this pickup schedule <laughs> <laughs> and all the different things that the Book Fairies has going on. So I'll stop there and I'll just, um, I, we always try to end on our 9.55 and we're right on track, but Kimberly, Eileen, what would you like to leave the group with? And just thank you so much for putting this together for us and spending some time. Of, of course, thank you for having us. Uh, the one thing I would say is I've been there I, I, you know, I started with pals and I came into, it was like starting pals all over again. Um, I know you feel like you're drinking from the fire hose after this, you know, conversation, um, but I've been there and it is really important that you just take one piece at a time. Otherwise you will be overwhelmed. And, and, and what is, you know, the things that are going to take you to that next level. And for me, it was starting with who we have in our system and how can I communicate with them? And the next thing was that classy peer-to-peer -peer, uh, fundraising platform, which enabled me to raise money. Uh, when I started three years ago, we had you know, not a lot of money in the bank and it was me and a part-time employee. Uh, we now have two full-timers, three part-timers and uh, four consultants. Uh, we've been able to, uh, I have you know, a decent amount of money in the bank and I've invested more money back into it. So you have to make money to invest money back into it so that you can get to these places. And as I move forward, I figure out what's the next thing I need to invest in to get me to that next level. So that's what I would do is just take it a little bit at a time and, and know that you're doing great work. And, um, you know, and the other thing I always say is, see, is there anyone else that you can work with, collaborate with, um, you know, partner with, join forces with, 
so that you're, if you're in the same space, think about it. Is there someone that you can, you know, take your missions and merge it? I'm a big person, collaborative. I always say I'll talk myself out of a job. If if merging a company organizations, I lose my job, then the missions and mission stronger for it. Then that's what that's the other thing I would say. If there's anybody else in your space, see if you can collaborate with them. That's my thought. Kimberly, what is your thought? Oh, that you know, a salesforce can really be anything that you want it to be, and ultimately, hopefully, the what we were talking about earlier—that one source of truth—it um, can be so useful to have one place to go to and look at one person and say, "Who is this person to me?" and how many times have they participated in our organization? And how can I further engage with this person? Or maybe we've lost touch. How can we get back into touch? And how can we, you know, further this relationship? And having one CRM, having one data management system that's able to encompass all of those things, we can look at one person and say, they volunteered, they donated. They came to this, they, you know, referred us to all these different people. Um, it's really helpful in being able to see the whole picture and being able to analyze the work that you're doing and make the work that you're doing more efficient. And so if there's any way that we can help, you know, help you do that, we would love to. So. So I'm going to jump back into the conversation because I just want to say thank you to our two speakers and thank you, as I said, to Christine for collaborating and leading this discussion. Um, we do try to end really quick so we can get you to your so everybody can have a 10 o'clock meeting. So I will stop talking. There's one thing I would let a little specific ask from me if I don't send out my newsletter unless somebody wants it, but there's a lot of good nuggets of what I'm doing in nonprofit. So if I just put the link in there. If you copy and paste it, you can get my newsletter, which goes out every week. Um, I would... And, these meetings will be uh, referenced in that newsletter as well. I'm going to leave it here. Uh, Christine and I will send you an email as a follow-up. Kimberly and Eileen's information will be there. I hope you've been using the chat appropriately already during this meeting. And that's it. Let's leave it here because uh, we got to go. Make a great day, everybody. I'll see you later. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much.